everyone, I thought I would do a video about the finishes that I've had so far this year. If all you've ever seen of my stitching or the videos that I've put on YouTube, you probably think the only things I stitch are Heaven and Earth designs and Chatelaine designs, which if you follow me on Instagram, you know isn't true. So I thought I'd just show you the work that I've finished so far. All of these projects were started and finished this year. The only two designs, two whips that I had that I carried over from last year are my two Heaven and Earth designs and obviously they're going to take a little bit longer to finish. So I like to um, have some sort of finishes. So I like to break up stitching on bigger designs with smaller finishes because I do like to finish things and I try not to be too much of a serial starter. So that's what I thought I'd do in this video. I also thought I would show you a few of the different um, threads and things that I've used for each of the projects. Um, I don't know yet whether I'm going to do some sort of massive stash video, I don't know. I'm sure people don't want to see you know, every thread and fabric I've got in my collection, but if you want me to do some sort of stash video then let me know. But I thought this way would be a bit more sort of natural and easier to introduce the different threads as I talk about the projects that I've used them on. So um, starting from the smallest to the greatest, um, here's a design a lot of you will probably recognise. Um, well if you don't recognise a design you'll recognise the designer behind it. This one's called Modern Artists. There you go, if I put it a bit closer and you can read the quote. I knew as soon as I saw this design that I had to stitch it because I just love art, all things arty, even though I wouldn't actually, I'm not any good at doing any sort of art myself, um, but I, um, I do really appreciate art and artists. So I knew I had to stitch this one. It's stitched on um, 28 count Jobalan, that's how you say it. I've got no idea how you say it. You don't think about these things, so you have to say it out loud, but that's how I say it in my head. It's um, hand dyed by Pole Stitches, a great um, hand dyed fabric uh, company in the UK, and they obviously ship worldwide. Um, I found it in my stash, it was from a grab bag, I think, so I don't know the exact colour, but it was perfect because it's pinks and purples, which, uh, well, purple is my ultimate favourite colour. You'll see lots of purple choices, fabric and thread in in my um, whips and finishes. Um, yep, yeah, so that's that one. And you can see, if you look at little Vincent and Frida, I added in some beads, some delicate beads from my stash, because I felt they needed a, a little bit of bling to them. So, that's that one. And the other Clouds Factory finish that I had, they did um, a stitch along on their Facebook page for a school new. And I hadn't stitched one of those before and I thought it was about time that I did. It's one of those things that I kept meaning to get around to. And at that point I had a lot of Clouds Factory patterns on my wish list, but I hadn't actually got around to purchasing them. So I thought it was a good opportunity to kill two birds with one stone and um, stitch a designer that I hadn't stitched and stitch a Biscorni, which I hadn't done before. So the one that I chose was um, We're All Mad Here, which is a, obviously an Alice in Wonderland um, themed Biscorni. Um, Probably one of the things you'll notice as I eventually you know, show you the type of things that I like to stitch, things that I've finished, things that I have in my stash. Um, anything with a literary reference or um, a fairy tale theme. Um, I, I love designs which sort of um, incorporate those themes in them. So I'm quite inclined to um, buy them and stitch them if they've got sort of a book theme or something like that. So um, complete with pins. Here is my um, finished Biscorni. So there's the top and there's the bottom. I used um, fabric I had in my stash so um, the top, the pink, is a hand dyed Lugana, 32 count Lugana from Silk Weavers as is the bottom blue one and I probably used a combination of DMC and anchor threads in this one whatever I could find in my stash. One thing I will say, um, which I'll get out of the way now, is obviously you can see there's metallic thread used. Um, initially in the pattern I think there was only gold called for but I had to um, bling it up a bit so I added in some turquoise and green and whatever I had in my stash. Um, metallic threads. And most stitchers have a love-hate relationship with them. I love metallic threads as I've probably said before. Um, I'd honestly thought I didn't have any of these in my stash but as I was looking for something else I came across one. Now, here are the threads that stitchers love to hate. Metallic, DMC, metallic threads. 
I was surprised that I had this in my stash. I honestly thought I'd thrown them all away because um, what I'm about to say is my own personal opinion. I will put that disclaimer up now. But I think the best place for this thread is um, in the bin. Whoever thought that it was a good idea to make stranded metallic thread, I don't know, they weren't a stitcher because it's awful thread. It frays and it breaks, doesn't matter what you do with it. When I first started stitching with metallic thread, I just thought, oh, this is all metallic threads. And so I just got on with it. I just didn't realise. I didn't know any different. I didn't know you could get better metallic threads, but you can. So if your only experience of metallic thread is this stuff and you hated it, I would suggest you might try another brand of metallic thread because you might have a completely different experience. This stuff is dreadful. Don't, well, I wouldn't say don't bother using it. That's not fair. That's just my opinion. What I use, what I always swap metallic threads for. If it calls for DMC metallic, I never ever use it. I swap it for another brand of metallic. And that's what I've done. All these designs that I've shown you that use metallics, the brand of metallic that I always use is um, Petite Treasure Braid. It comes in hundreds of colours and it's so much easier to use and you use it as it comes off um, off the card. So you don't have to worry about, you know, stranded threads, pulling out strands. You just use it as it comes off the card. It's much easier to use. It doesn't fray anywhere near as much. Um, so I use quite long lengths of this at a time when I stitch because it's really easy to stitch with. Of course, it's advisable um, when you use metallic thread to use shorter lengths of thread. You can use Thread Heaven, but I actually don't find Thread Heaven does anything. These threads are really easy, um, in my opinion, I have found, easy to stitch with. And these are the type of metallics that are used in um, Chatelaine, so I've always got quite a stash of them, and I um, like to collect them. So, yeah, that's just my little recommendation, um, where metallic threads are called for. Krennic is also another good substitute to use. Um, but DMC Metallics, no, horrible. I will admit that I haven't used their newer brand of metallic. Um, it comes on a reel, I think. It's single-stranded. I want to say it's called Diamante, but I'm not quite sure. But to be honest, I'm, I've had such bad experiences with DMC Metallic. I'm sold on Petite Treasure Braid now, so I'm not going to use anything else. But yeah, Krennic's another great substitute. I've always found them um, fine to stitch with. Yeah, so that's that one. So there you go. My first Biscorni, Alice in Wonderland, themed Biscorni, and I put, um, you can see, a beaded edge. It's the first time I've ever done it, first time I stitched a Biscorni, but I put a beaded edge with delicate beads that I had in my stash around the edge. So, there you go, that's two little finishes. Some more little finishes. Um, these designs, again, you'll recognise a very popular designer, Wee Little Stitches. Um, again, I'd had these. Uh, on my wish list for a while and I think they had a 10% off uh, code on their Etsy, in their Etsy shop so I thought wow this must be a sign so I bought some of the designs I wanted here we go if you're a fan of Firefly you'll recognise this it's obviously Serenity's crew Firefly, Firefly crew and I added in the little Firefly oh, Firefly quote at the bottom again with this one I swapped out the DMC metallic for um, Petite Treasure Braid. And I think, I, again, I stitched them in anchor threads. The fabric that this is stitched on, I don't know if you can if you can tell, but it's actually an opalescent opal fabric. It's by a fabric dyer that I really love. Um, fairly new fabric dyer. She dyes threads as well. I collect her threads and part of her monthly thread club and also I, ha I have um, a limited edition monthly fabric every month as well. Um, the company, although she's a woman show, Michelle, um, her company's called Jodery Designs. I hope I've said that right. I did ask her how to say it but I'll obviously put a link up as I will do with any designers or um, hand dyed fabric um, companies. I'll, I'll try and remember to put a link up in the description so if you want to see and have a look at what they do then of course that would be quite easy. So this one's a 28 count Opal Brittany. It's called Star of Wonder. I don't know, you can't really see the fabric colour very well, but it's sort of um, a blue, dark to light blue, sort of mottled fabric. But all her fabric uh, colours are based on her thread colours. So um, she can any of the threads that she, um, 
hand dyed variegated over dyed hand dyed over dyed threads cotton threads that she has you can request a fabric dyed with the same colors yep so that's that one didn't take very long to do as all of you know they're quite quick to stitch up but the other good thing about them is you can stitch sort of one character and you've had a little mini finish so they they do stitch up quite well and I really enjoyed stitching this one don't ask me what I'm going to make it into I just like stitching so yeah that's that one and the other design that I chose from We Little Stitches to do is a Princess Bride so I can see it very well that's that one there it's obviously got the light shining through it you can see a bit of the threads that are carried over but you can't actually see that in real life again with that one I would have swapped out the metallics um, and used um, Petite Treasure Braid and I probably stitched it on anchor and the fabric that this is stitched on again is um, Jodry Designs. It's um, 28 Camp Brittany Opal in um, Fairy Bower, the fabric is. So it's sort of a very light sort of greens, bright greens to sort of grey purple. It's very hard with these fabrics to actually um, show them properly. But that's that one. Um, next finish, I think this is one of my, re one of my most recent finishes actually. Um, this design is a Dinky Dyes design. This is the chart for it here. It's called um, Spring Hearts Sampler. And I saw this design a while ago on the internet and I really wanted it. And I just couldn't find it anywhere in the UK. And I even contacted um, Jo, who um, used to own Dinky Dyes, she doesn't anymore. She's gone back to Australia and the company's been um, sold to somebody else. Um, and she said she didn't actually have a UK um, distributor. So I was just about getting to the point where I was going to order it from 123 Stitch when I actually saw it, um, it came up on eBay for auction. And ordinarily I don't um, buy charts, secondhand charts on eBay where I can because it's always nice um, to obviously support the designer and to buy the charts first hand. Um, but in some cases, obviously if a design is out of print, or in this case, it's hard to find. I thought I'd uh, make an exception, and so I won it on eBay. So that was good for me. So I didn't have to place an order with one, two, three stitched af after all. So I stitched it on um, Crafty Kitten fabric. The fabric's called Tea Rose. You probably can't see it very well at all. But um, there you go. You can see it's got all sorts of different stitches in. It uses metallic threads, um, three types of metallic, two dinky dye silks, and obviously Delica beads. I substituted the beads, it called for Mill Hill seed beads, so I just used Delica beads. And I also substituted two of the Kranix because I had very similar petite treasure braids in my stash already. Um, but the Mill Hill, Mill Hill, dinky dyes silks used by Maddie's Rose. And peach melba is not much of that one left anymore. Dinky dye silks are fantastic silks. They're one of the least expensive silks, and they're 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 great silks. They come in all sorts of colours, and they handle just the set well, very similar to um, cotton really. But obviously they've got that lovely sheen to them, and they're you know really easy to use. They they um, float through your fabric when you stitch with them. So they're a great silk. If you're hesitant about using silks, you're worried about them. And they're a great sort of starter silk, really. So I really like using those. So yeah, that's another great UK fabric dyer, Crafty Kitten. Highly recommend um, Dawn's colours. And obviously, again, she ships internationally. So there's that one. I really enjoyed doing this one, um, doing the band sampler. It's something that I've wanted to do for a while, but they stitch up, you know, really nicely. And there's a great combination of different um, stitches in this one. You've got um, herringbone stitch, four-sided stitch, um, little Smyrna stitches, and also some of my most hated stitch, lazy daisies. I hate them, but they didn't turn out too badly in this one. Yeah, so a lot of different elements in that design, so that's why I wanted to stitch it, really. So that's that one. Um, another little stitch by another one of my... Um, favourite designers. This one's by the Primitive Hair and I actually have a finished item. You might have spied it when I did my um, storage um, and stitching setup video but it's this little finish here. 
basically Isabella released um, a special pattern, this cross, cross stitcher at work pattern. She released it as a special as part of a competition and everybody that um, sent in a finished picture of the design got put into a draw to win um, fantastic and very beautiful and um, primitive hair prizes. I didn't win any of the prizes but I absolutely loved taking part and it was great to see on Facebook the range of different finishes that people did. Some people's finishes were absolutely amazing, I mean they must be fantastic sewers, I'm not the world's greatest sewer, that's not the bit I enjoy, I find it quite stressful really, um, finishing items because I'm not a natural, I'm not a natural sewer so it takes a lot of thought and work to uh, finish things so that's my little finish so I stitched it on um, some lakeside linen actually that I had in my stash um, hand dyed linen I think looking at it I think it's probably 32 count looking at the size of my crosses but I used um, gentle art sampler threads um, for the thread um, I think the chart originally called for DMCs, but I had these in my stash so I thought I'd use them and I just finished it off with some Moda fabric quilting fabric that I had in my stash with a little trim and the little beads that's about as fancy as I get with my finishing so I was quite pleased that I'd actually finished this properly because that doesn't happen very often for my stitching so that's that one from the Primitive Hair I think that chart is still available on her Itzy shop but again I'll link to it so that's another little finish that I had um, another finish um, was actually a surprise start, it's one that I hadn't intended on um, starting. It was a stitch along uh, from a blog from a um, famous designer, um, Blackbird Designs. Um, a lot of stitchers uh, stitch their designs. Um, I, this is the first one of theirs that I stitch, but I definitely stitch others. I have quite an eclectic taste when it comes to charts that I like, so sometimes it's difficult to decide what to stitch. It depends what mood I'm in as to what I start. But um, this is their, it was called um, Her Sampler. It's the first time I've actually stitched an alphabet sampler. Here's the design. It incorporates a few different stitches. I've always admired these sort of reproduction samplers, but I never actually felt the urge to stitch on myself. But after stitching this one, I'm definitely interested. So if any of you out there have stitched um, a scarlet letter design, I'm really looking to stitch um, one of those, there's a particular one I've got my eye on, flame stitch, that I want to do. So if any of you have got any experience with those designs, then please um, let me know, put in a comment on what you thought of them. Um, this one I stitched in um, what is fast becoming one of my favourite brands of silk, and that is um, Overa Soir, Soir d'Alger, which look like this. what the floss label looks like. They're, um, they come in five metre skeins and they're seven stranded skeins, seven ply skeins. Um, I just really love stitching with these silks. Um, they're all solids, so um, solid colours. So um, I do like to substitute for these where I can. So there's the little floss label. I always think it's useful to, this is just me, to learn what floss labels look like. For the reason that I am quite the fan of eBay, as I expect a lot of you are, and sometimes people don't actually know what they're selling. They might just put up a bulk lot of embroidery, what they call embroidery thread. And sometimes you can see a bit of the floss label and you think, hmm, I know what that is. And it's worth a lot more than you've, you know, put the starting bid at. So quite often I think it's always worth recognising your floss labels because you never know you might get a bargain somewhere so that's Soir d'Alger and that's what this her sampler is stitched with I think initially it was charted with either Carrie's Creation Silks uh, the, no it wasn't it wasn't Carrie's Creations it was um, oh, Crescent Colours version I don't even call that anymore either Colourworks version of Silk which name escapes me right this second I want to say it's called Belle de Soir, but for the life of me I can't remember, but anyway, I didn't stitch it in those. I used the Avas, um, Avas Soir silks. So you can see the top 
there is cross stitch and then this one here that's four sided stitch and then you obviously you've got your Algerian eyelets and then further down was there anything oh no I was thinking there were some road stitches in this one but no it's just straight up cross stitch from then on but I do really love stitching with these silks they're um, got a really lovely sheen to them which you can't see on them on the camera and the top the outside border that stitched with um, thread gatherer silk and color silk so that's that one as far as I know you can still get the chart for that one on um, their blog which I'll obviously try and remember to link to um, so you can stitch that one up for yourself and as I say if you've got any um, thoughts on scarlet letter reproduction samplers then let me know because I really want to stitch one of those that one is stitched on 36 count Edinburgh linen in a sand colour I think yeah so 36 count is also becoming one of my um, preferred count of fabrics um, it's the first this year is the first time I've stitched on that count for some reason I thought it would be tiny and too small to stitch on but I can see it perfectly fine this is my confession I'm really bad but I don't stitch with them um, a magnifier so all the over one stitching all the you know over one stitching on um, heaven and earth designs and on my chatelaines I don't use a magnifier for which is probably really bad and probably means that I'll go blind before I'm 40 but there you are the next piece is a bit of black work although I don't actually very often stitch black work pieces um, in black I prefer to use um, a nice variegated thread where I can to show the variegated thread off. I think it's a really good opportunity if you've got variegated over dyed threads in your stash and you're not sure what to do with them then black work or any sort of outline charts are a really good thing to really show off the colours in them. This one's by a designer called um, Brodeuse Bressan. She's based in, in uh, France but she's actually a Dutch lady and I learned about her when I was looking on Etsy for black work patterns and I came across, um, came across her, saw she had a blog went to her blog to see her works and realised she was having um, a Facebook freebie stitch along on her group so I joined her group and stitched this one up if you're interested in black work there's a few black work um, stitch alongs going on at the moment obviously um, Mackenzie at the Stitching Array and Dana at Stitching Book Nerd um, are both talked about the um, Elizabeth Ullman Save the Stitches one um, but I know that Esther the designer behind Produce Bersan is having another freebie black work stitch along on her Facebook group at the end of this month so if that's something you're interested in then I suggest you join the group but anyway enough of me waffling here is um, the finished piece she brought out a part each week and so I st actually for once in my life I actually stitched along with everybody else and did the part each week so it's a fleur-de-lis design and for this one, I stitched it on um, 28 count um, cashew, obviously linen. And I don't know if you can actually tell, but it's a sort of baby pink colour. And the threads that I used were hand dyed fibres threads, silks, in um, Victorian mauve, which is sort of purpley blue. Again, purple. And orb was the other one and that's sort of a lighter version, similar tones. And both of these are um, premium floss. And what that means, if you don't know about hand dyed fibre silks, is, and they're slightly thicker than one strand of DMC, they're kind of equivalent to a strand and a half of DMC. In much the same way, I forgot to mention that the um, Avast silk is thicker than one strand of D DMC, sort of a strand and a half. So these give quite a nice thicker finish and obviously with black work um, you want the threads to lay nice and straight and if you're dealing with two strands sometimes that can be a bit awkward so that's why I chose to use one strand of thicker thread, thicker silk to stitch this piece up with and there's also a few little delicate beads on it as well. The beads were actually in the chart this time I didn't just add them myself um, but yeah this was a really fun design to stitch up and I, I love the colours and I love the effect of using that silk thread so that's that one um, the last two pieces that I've stitched up are two bigger well I suppose they're bigger pieces 
they didn't necessarily take a long time to stitch but they're just bigger in size um, this one again is by the Primitive Hair who also designed the little cushion, same designer I'm a big fan of her designs, I just yesterday kitted up um, two more of her designs to start, I might start them quite soon actually I find that in the summer I don't stitch as much and if I do want to stitch I don't necessarily want to stitch on my heaven and earth big designs, I like to stitch something small, something that's easy to pick up for various reasons really, um, I don't always have the concentration when it's sunny outside, I want to be outside in the sun and also um, there tends to be more sporting events on like Wimbledon that I love to watch and it's very hard to watch tennis and stitch at the same time so I like to stitch something sort of less complicated um, with less colours so the Primitive Hair's designs are perfect for that and I, I just love them this one, again you will see my love of literary designs designs that feature literary reference this one is a sampler Pride and Prejudice it only uses four, uh, three colours, three DMCs, that's all it calls for but I think it's really effective use of the colours if I bring it in a bit closer you can see that there are a few um, Algerian eyelets in this design in the initials at the bottom there you can see the little eyelets this was the first piece I stitched on 36 count linen and it's kind of what sold me on stitching on this count of fabric. I was actually very pleased because this is a piece of hand dyed silk weavers um, Edinburgh linen that I got for a bargain on eBay. I got a fat quarter and I think it only cost me £4 so what's that about $7 something like that and again it's another good reason why um, you you know, if you're really into your stitching and you like your fabrics and your threads, another good reason to learn about the different types of fabric and what they're called, because this was actually mislabeled. I could see um, from their description what they'd called it, but the thread, um, the fabric label didn't match up. I think they had it down as a piece of Belfast linen, but it clearly said on the label of the fabric that it was Edinburgh linen, so I knew it was 36 count and that it was um, selling for way less than it should do really. So another good good reason to, you know, if you want to build up your thread stash, your fabric stash, learn about the different names for fabrics, the different counts that they come in, and your thread labels, your floss labels, to recognise um, what certain threads are, in case the description on eBay doesn't match. So this one eventually will get framed and put in my bedroom. I just love it. I love Pride and Prejudice, as a lot of people do. And so I knew when I saw this I had to stitch it. So if I move it in, you can see the text there, obviously a little quote. Yeah, so I'm really happy, happy with that finish. Another one of my favourite finishes, although I do say that about a lot of them, but it's hard to choose. Now, this next piece is in my, if I had to make a list of my top three finishes, this would be in it. It's one of the most favourite designs I've ever stitched. Um, I probably, you won't get the full effect of it if I just hold it up, but um, I might do a little camera pan of it as well so you can see it more closely. It's by Northern Expressions Needlework, fast becoming one of my absolute favourite designers. Um, I have a lot of Nicole's um, patterns on my wish list and I know that she's releasing two patterns towards the autumn in September that I'm going to have to purchase straight away because she's spoken about them on the Facebook page and I just know I'm going to have to stitch them so I'm really looking forward to that this design is called um, Twisted Band Sampler each band, um, every other band is cross stitch, speciality stitch, cross stitch, speciality stitch if you're frightened or a bit scared of speciality stitches then she did release a cross stitch only version of the chart but obviously I wanted to stitch the speciality stitches. I will say um, that with each of the speciality stitches in the chart there was a fantastic stitch diagram. The stitch diagrams for this chart were some of the best I've ever seen. Um, really clear, really easy to understand. Um, not that any of the stitches in this particular chart were new to me. Um, some of them I've stitched more than others but I would say fantastic, fantastic charts. 
easy clear layout. Again this one was charted to use um, over at Aswar silk, these silks, but there was also a DMC conversion that was offered. These silks were obviously solid silks so there wouldn't really be any difference, well apart from the sheen of the silk, as far as colours go, they're not it's not they're not variegated silk so it would be quite easy and a lot of stitchers have looking at the Facebook page chosen to stitch this design using um, DMC cotton obviously the only difference is the um, Overhousewear silks are thicker so for the cross stitches you only needed to use one thread whereas if you use DMC you'd need to use two threads and maybe for some of the speciality thread um, speciality stitches you might need to use two strands of floss rather than the one strand of um, Overhousewear silk so yes um, really one of my favourite finishes ever I think um, the other types of thread that you could use for this design um, on Facebook or she's got a website as well but there's another um, hand dyed silk um, dyer that, whose silks I like to buy and those are thread picker silks they're dyed by um, Eileen Hoare and she's actually produced a special rainbow sampler pack of threads specifically for this um, twisted band sampler design and um, quite a few stitchers are stitching up using those silks as well so again I'll put a link to um, Eileen's Facebook page so you can have um, a better idea of her silks and I know for the um, Northern Expressions needlework designs that are coming out in the autumn that again Eileen has put together um, another pack of threads specifically for that design um, so it would be quite exciting perhaps to stitch um, I might choose to, to uh, use her silks to stitch that design um, in the fall. I'm trying to be good with my stash buying because I know that I'm going to want to stitch those designs towards the end of the year and I know that I'm going to probably want to stitch them in silk. So um, you probably won't see many stash haul videos from me because I'm sort of trying where I can to um, stitch from stash and um, so that I can save up my stash fund for um, those silks towards the end of the year. So, um, those are my finishes. Again, it's been another long video. I'm really sorry. Um, I hope you don't find it too boring, but I know that I can really go on about <laughs> threads and designs and stitches and all sorts of things. So, I hope you found it interesting and maybe you've seen a design or two that you like the look of as well. So, it's always fun to find new designs and designers. And that's one of the things I love about watching other people's videos is it gives me ideas or shows me designs that I've not seen before. Um, so, I hope... Um, I remember all the designs I've put in this video so that I can uh, link in the description to where you can get the charts from because sometimes I know when I've looked on people's blogs or um, pictures on the internet um, I've seen a design I really love but there's no details about who the designer is or where I can get the chart from so I always find that a bit frustrating so I always try um, even on Instagram to make sure that I put who the designer is because obviously it's good for them. Um, to get um, other stitches buying their designs. So um, those are my finishes of the year so far. As I say, I doubt you'll see much progress on my stitching for the next um, months, few months or so. So probably my shortest YouTube videos ever will be my monthly roundup progress reports. They'll probably only be like five minutes long because I don't have much to show. To show, but that um, I don't know when when I put my next video up or what it'll be about. I haven't done about my heaven and earth designs yet, so I might do that. I don't know. But anyway, that's my finishes so far. So I hope you've enjoyed um, having a little look at the other things I stitch aside from uh, heaven and earth designs and um, Chatelaine. So all that's left to say is thank you for watching and happy stitching.